Hey guys, welcome back to my channel. As promised a week ago, in this video I'm going to show you how I create some of my layouts and designs for my photo books in Publisher or Adobe InDesign. Don't forget to subscribe if you haven't already done so and make sure to check the notifications bell to never miss a new video. So just to specify at the very beginning, I'm using here Affinity Publisher, which is my preferred software for creating photo books, but it's almost completely identical to Adobe InDesign in the layout and the tools available. Of course, Adobe InDesign is a little bit more um, sophisticated and has slightly more advanced tools, but what we're going to use it for today, you can find those tools in both software and they're going to be named very similarly and be found in very similar places. So whichever you're using, uh, you can follow this tutorial. So as you can see, I've already got my double page spread here and my pages set up. I'm not going to show you how I did this because I've already got a video on YouTube titled how to set up a photo book project in Affinity Publisher or Adobe InDesign. There's going to be a link in the description below if you want to watch that, then please do so. So we've got the double page spread here. This is a lay flat book, a 12 by 12 inch square lay flat book. So you can see the right side here and the left side. The faint gray line at the top is the bleed and this is my divider line between the two pages. They are facing pages, so I see them as a spread and the blue lines here show me my margins, which in this case are one inch. I like to use a much bigger margin than the average because I think it gives a more elegant look to your book. The first thing I'm gonna do is just show you a couple of layouts and some tools in creating layouts. So when you create a layout, you want to use this tool here, which is the picture frame. So the easiest layouts are the ones which are symmetric. So what you can do is create a frame here and as you can see, my frame is kind of snapping to the guidelines and the uh, other objects in the document. And you can obviously change that if you come to view snapping manager. And here you can set what you would like your object to snap to, to the grid, baseline grid, guide, spreads, margins, and so on. So it's a very handy tool because you can easily line up objects on your layout. Now, what I'm going to do with this square shape here, I'm going to duplicate it, uh, which you can do by Command C, Command V, so copy paste, or you can just press Command J on a Mac, and then I'm just going to move it. So now I've got basically one photo on each page and there's a nice one inch margin around. So this is one of the simplest um, layouts. You can create one photo per page. And now what I'm gonna do is drag in some photos. Now these are frames, so you can change the content of these photos very easily. So let's just drag in two photos here, the hotel, and let's see another one of the hotel. There we go. So once I have the pictures in the frame, I can double click and then I can move the picture inside the frame if I want to position it and then I can do the same with the second photo. You can obviously make it bigger or smaller and uh, this way you can make sure that the picture in the frame is exactly where you want it to be. You've got some other tools here as well. So if you click on the photo, here is this properties uh, section. So let's see what these do. The first one, as you can see, doesn't do much because they already have the picture in the middle and it's cropped because it's a landscape photo. The second one is going to make the photo uh, smaller without any cropping, but it makes it the biggest possible within the frame. And the third one, as you can see, stretches the photo to fill up all the space, but it's still not cropping anything. And none, of course, means that there's nothing happening to the photo. Now the anchor here in the bottom is basically showing you which side of the photo is the most important. So if I come to this, which is scale to max fit, and I click on the middle one, the photo is going to be aligned to be in the middle. If I click on the left, you can see I'm going to see the left and it's going to crop more from the right side. And if I click on the right, it's going to crop more from the left side. So these are very handy tools, especially if you want to do this to like 50 photos at the same time, because of course you can do it manually and put the photo exactly where you want it to be. But if you want to do bulk editing, then you can use that tool in the top. Now, if I don't want to see my guidelines and I just want to see how the page looks, 
I can press Control W and that's gonna get rid of my margin, my bleed and my guides. So I can see exactly how my page looks. So this was one very simple layout. Now let's assume that I would like a full double page spread photo. So what I'm going to do now is just delete this um, frame here and make this frame the full double page spread size. Now, as you can see, when I'm enlarging my frame, the photo is changing with it. And again, that's a very handy tool because you don't have to then readjust it. Now here you would think that you made your photo a full double page spread, but this is the crucial, very important section or information here that you have to stretch the photo all the way to the bleed line, so the faint gray line in each direction Otherwise, you're going to end up with white lines around the edges of your double page spread because when the photo book is trimmed, there's going to be a bleed. And if the bleed is not fully covered by your picture, you're going to end up with uneven white lines on some of the sides. So if you want a full bleed photo like this one, even if it's one page or two, you have to make sure that it goes all the way to the edge of the bleed line. So not the edge of the page, the edge of the bleed line. And now if I press Control W preview, I can see how it's going to look. And it also crops off the bleed so you can see after trimming how much of your photo is going to get lost when the photo book is printed. Now what if I would like to put multiple photos on my page? So we're going to start again with the rectangle tool, the frame rectangle tool, and we're going to create one box. And now I'm going to duplicate this box, Command J, three times and as you can see when I press the duplicate button it already places the box at an equal distance so that's again a very handy tool in these uh, software and now what I'm going to do is select all three of them and press duplicate move it and press duplicate again now, as you can see, obviously my nine photo boxes are nowhere near where they should be. I want them to line up nicely within the margin. So what you can do is select all of them and then just move them as one until you get to the middle. And amazingly, it makes every single box the same size with the same distance between the boxes and it now fits perfectly into my shape. So this is how you can create layouts with lots of photos without aligning each individual box to the other one and measuring how many centimeters or inches each box should be. You don't need to worry about that. Just create one box and use these tools. The next thing I want to show you in this video is how to create some basic text or titles in your photo books. Now there are so many ways of doing this. You can use a master page, you can save um, certain typesets and fonts and styles. I don't want to go into too much detail, I just want to show you a very easy form of creating the exact same style that I created in my Hawaii and uh, San Francisco photo book that I showed you last week. So in that one I decided to go with a, a lowercase kind of uh, serif font. So let's just put here um, California. If you come here to the characters, I'm going to select, um, let's say Dido, for example, that's a nice one. And I'm going to make it much bigger. And here is another very handy tool, which is the spacing between your letters. It's called tracking and play around with this as much as you want, because it can create very nice looks in your photo books. So I'm going to put this to 50 right now and I'm going to make the text a different color, so maybe a light blue. Now once I have this main title, I want to add my subtitles with a sans serif font in the, in the bottom, and I'm going to use again, I forgot to say, the artistic text tool, so not the text box tool, the text artistic text tool, which is a T shortcut, and I'm going to type here, let's assume the date, so 20 to 28 January 2019. So obviously you can see the text is now the same style as the previous one, so I have to click on it. And I'm going to select here a sans serif font. This one will do fine. And I'm also going to click on the all caps button. So when you do anything with text, um, 
some of these things are going to be very familiar from word processes, but in Adobe InDesign and also in Affinity Publisher, you have a lot of um, tools to manipulate your text. And here you've got the basic uh, font, the size and the color, then you've got some decorations and you've got the positioning, which is basically the spacing from top bottom, the spacing between the letters, the stretching of the letters and the spacing between the lines. And then you've got typography, which is basically creating uh, superscripts or all caps, uh, small caps and so on. So I'm going to click on all caps and I'm going to make this a little 50%, maybe a hundred percent this time. And I'm going to make this black and I'm going to make this much, much smaller. In fact, I'm going to make it gray, not black. So let's come to colors and there's a gray, that's fine. Now, as you can see, when I start moving my text, there is a green line and the green line basically is a snap feature again. So it's trying to align my text, the right side of my subtitle to the right side of the main titles and there's lots of other green lines that appear in the middle and so on but again this is a very handy function to make sure that the two text elements line up now to fill the space here on the left side i'm going to use a block or a kind of line and i'm going to use for that the rectangle tool so i'm going to create here again you can see the green line very very handy and i'm just going to make a gray bar maybe that long and that's going to fill up my space there and add a little bit of a geometry and color to the text um, style or text design. Now, if I press Control W to go into my preview, you can see how my titles look. And then that's the style I'm going to go with in the entire book. And this is just one very simple way of creating a stylized uh, title for your photo book that you can use throughout. The last thing I want to show you in this video is how to create a more varied layout with different shapes and different sizes of photos. I'm going to exit my preview mode now to see my guides. And what I would like to create here is some body text, a couple of smaller photos, one bigger photo on the side and two, three smaller photos on the on the left side. So I'm going to create my first rectangle here. And as you can see, this rectangle is going to be full bleed going all the way to the edges. So not the edge of the page, but the edge of the bleed line. And then I'm going to create maybe three boxes here. So again, creating one box only and then pressing Command J twice and moving my boxes. And I'm going to click on all three of them, make sure they don't go over the margin and I'm going to make them a little bit longer. Now let's move this text a little bit further up and I'm going to add a text box here. So this time we're not going to use the artistic tool, we're going to use the text frame tool and I'm going to create a text frame, maybe this big. And now obviously you can fill it with text, but I'm going to just come and fill it with some uh, filler text just to see how it's going to look. And I would like this to be some sans serif font. So come back to the characters. And if you don't see any of these, you can always come to view studio and just tick the tools that you need, so character, uh, text styles, paragraph, and so on. So once we have our text here, uh, we're going to keep it aligned left, but I would like to select a different font. So I'm going to go with this one again, and just a bit more spaced out. Let's go for 50%, yeah. And a bit more space between the actual lines as well. So we have to come to this tool here in the bottom with the A over A which is leading override and I'm going to get maybe 16 points and that looks all right. Just move it down a little bit and then I'm going to put two more photos here in the bottom. So duplicate, bring it down here in line with the text and then I'm going to make these two a little bit longer. So select both of them and make them a little bit longer. And then if I populate it with pictures, this photo here and some more sunset photos. Uh, 
and let's go into preview mode and then you can see another kind of layout. Now, obviously you can fine tune this to your own liking. I would not leave this gap here right now. We just come up with something else and I would probably not have so much text on this page. I just noticed that I'm using California as my title and all the pictures are from Hawaii. Ignore that, it doesn't really matter. And as I said in this video, I just wanted to show you some very basics about creating layouts and creating text elements. You can get so much more advanced with this by using the text tiles and using master pages. I'm going to show you that in another video, but this one hopefully gave you a little bit of a starter if you are new to Adobe InDesign or Affinity Publisher. If you're a seasoned user of these software, then probably this is not the video for you to watch, but hopefully it still gives you some inspiration about what looks good in a lay flat photo book. If you have any more questions about this video, leave them in the comments and let me know what you would like to see uh, more tutorials in Adobe InDesign or photo book company editors like Mixbook, Shutterfly and so on.